this was the most important thing that I've seen in this whole doc, whole document. Right? Okay. I've heard a lot of discussion. Is 5e going to do away with the short rest? I feel like everything they're doing, they're changing things, they're moving towards that 5.5 uh, mindset. But here we, here we have a short rest directly called out. That they're still using them. Now, mm-hmm. it doesn't change what short rest means in 5e. I don't know, right. but they're still there. They're still there. So, I'm Nerdarchist Ted. And I'm Nerdarchist Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Nerdarchy. Nerdarchy. Four nerds, by nerds. All right, we're on part four for Wonders of the Multiverse feats, and there's a ton of them. 21. 21 feats for fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons, and holy crap. Asked a lot of stuff to uh, to go through, so we're gonna power through, you know, all of this and uh, yeah. see what these feats are all about. Now, a bunch of the giant feats have been altered from the giant options, so it came from there, and pretty much from what I can see, um, the ones that they redo have all been turned into half feats and uh, kind of refocused a little bit. I do think I like the half feet versions better. Sure, I you know. The, you know, we're shooting this video right after this drops. So I didn't really have a lot of time to do a, a side-by-side comparison mm, right, of all of right. them. But I looked I looked enough to see, you know, what changed. And also, the Rune Carver feat, that one also got whittled way down. Pun not intended. Or maybe it was. I don't know. But <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, any, yeah. any chance for a pun, I'm here for it. <laughs> but there was a lot more runes in the previous, previous one. So as Dave says, we have 21 feats to really play with. And we're just going to go through them. In order, but before we do, if you happen to like this video, others like it, as well as all the awesome content you can find over at nerdarchy.com, why not come check us out over on Patreon and throw us some love there. Articles like things D&D people like, like Mountain Dew. All right, so without further ado, let's dive into these feats and go through. We've got first up Agent of Order, prerequisite fourth level, as well as Scion of the Outer Plains feat. You can channel forces of order that lock the multiverse into patterns. Your actions are your own to choose, but these forces grant you the following benefits. You get a, it's a half feat, so you get an ability score of your choice by 1 to a maximum of 20, as well as Stasis Strike. Once per turn, when you damage a creature you can see within 60 feet of you, you can deal an additional die 8 force damage to target, and it must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be restrained by spectral bindings until the start of your next turn. These bindings manifest as change, gears, encasing stone, or some other symbol of stasis. You can use this benefit a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you get them all back on a long rest. Which, I mean, this is really good. Half feet for one, uh, force damage for another, and also you can lock someone down uh, for a turn anyway. So all in all, that's that's a pretty solid get. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, you get to the, you know you get to do it a number of times a day, so useful. Baffle Scion, uh, you have to be fourth level, and you have to have Scion of the Outer Planes. And in this case, uh, it's denoted as an evil outer plane. You can channel cosmic forces of evil that cause pain, but invigorate your being. You can choose your own actions. Despite this malign connection, you gain the following benefits. It's a half feat. Uh, choose any ability of your choice, and you also get life draining grasp. Once per turn, when you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack, you can also deal necrotic damage to it. The damage equals die six plus your proficiency bonus. You gain a number of hit points equal to the necrotic damage dealt. You can also use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. Uh, the long rest to get it all back. I, I, I like this. Uh, I mean, for any melee character, I feel like this is this is a good get. A half feet and a number of times a day you go to your proficiency bonus, you can essentially drain life on somebody on top of your your the damage you are already doing and you heal. Yeah, that that's a win-win in my book. Yeah, definitely, definitely uh very cool. Uh so cart- cartomancy is another feat, fourth level sorcerer, warlock, or wizard class. You've learned to channel magic through a deck of playing cards granting you the following benefits. You can use your deck of cards as a spell casting focus. When you use your deck as a focus to cast a spell that deals damage, roll a d4. You get a bonus to one damage roll of the spell equal to the number rolled. The bonus applies to one creature of your choice that can see damaged by the spell. You can use the benefit a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you uh, finish a long rest. You also learn card tricks. You learn the prestidigitation cantrip and can use it to create illusions that duplicate the effects of stage magic. 
When you use it, this spell in this way, you can conceal the verbal and somatic components of the spell as mundane conversation and card handling, as well as hidden ace. When you finish a long rest, you can choose one spell you know and imbue it into a card, and the chosen spell must have a casting time of one action, and the level must be less than or equal to your proficiency bonus. While the card is imbued with the spell, you can use your bonus action to flourish the card and cast a spell within it. The card then immediately loses its magic. So my first you know, hot take on this one is... Uh, you could use this bonus, uh, use this feat to boost that, you know, super pumped up uh, magic missile spell that we did a video on oh, way yeah. back when, because it's one damage roll, but the way, the way you know, it was called out, magic missile is you roll the damage once, so boom. And then damage applies to one creature, so. So if, oh. you, hit, if you hit them all, yeah. that one dude, boom. Well, the bonus applies to one creature of your choice that you can see the damage by this spell. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it would it would work that way if you would add it because I think it would only be the die four. It wouldn't be uh, uh, it, all the re regardless. Yeah. You're still adding extra damage, even if you're only even if you only say it's a single die four more. You could add it. You can it you can definitely defense. increase it by a d four. And I mean, you're getting to use this anywhere from two to six times a day. You get that one once a day ability where you're going to basically be able to cast a spell as a bonus action, which is really good. And then also the card trick of presentation, being able to get a free cantrip out of the deal, not bad at all. And for folks that want to make your Gambit or your Twist of Fate characters, you're one step closer. That's going to be it. Yep. Cohort of Chaos is fourth level. Uh, again, you know, it has the same. Uh, prereq is the other ones, but this time it's involving a chaotic outer plane. You can channel the cosmic forces of chaos that drive the multiverse toward both freedom and disarray. Your actions are still your choice, but you gain these benefits. Uh, you get it's a half feet, pick, and you take your pick. Chaotic Flare, when you roll a 1 or a 20 on attack roll or saving throw, your magic of the chaos flows through you. Roll on the uh, chaotic flow table to determine what happens. A flare lasts until the end of your next turn, and a new flare can occur until the first flare has ended. Um, disruption field, waves of energy, ripple, 10-foot sphere centered on you. Every creature other than uh, other than you that starts its turn in this area or moves into this area for the first time takes a die force damage. That would include your allies. Battle Fury, a creature of your choice, you can see... Is filled with reckless fury. The creature has advantage on attack rolls and disadvantage on ability checks. Unbound, when you move, you can use some or all of your walking speed to teleport once along with any equipment you're wearing or carrying up to the distance used to uh, an unoccupied space that you can see. Wailing winds. Howling winds uh, swirl around you in a 64 radius. You and any creatures in that radius has a disadvantage on wisdom saving throws. So it's not all good stuff. Um, and honestly, I, I would say like the biggest thing about about this table is I would like a bigger table, please. Uh, you know, just the four choices is is not enough for me. Uh, but you also forcefully release a, release a chaotic flare as a bonus action. Rolling the table as normal to determine the effects, you can use this bonus action a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you're gaining more on a long rest. So you can choose to do it. It happens on a 1 or a 20. Chaos Sorcerer, like, how could you not take this? Feat sure, yeah. If completely. you just want chaotic things. But my biggest beef is it needs I, a bigger table. I want more options, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I dig that one. I like Chaos. Uh, I could definitely see, you know, me giving this to NPCs that I make uh, you know, ju just for fun and just to have some cool things. To it would also be on. a good boon, you know, depending on what's going on in the game. I would agree with that as well. So next up is going to be Ember of the Fire Giant. Prereqs are fourth level and Strike of the Giant's feet. Uh, so we are definitely seeing more in that, uh, you know, uh, feet trees that, you know, earlier mm -hmm. parts of the edition weren't really getting into. You've manifested the fiery combat emblematic of the fire giants, granting you the following benefits. It's a half feet. You can increase your strength, con, or wisdom by plus one. Uh, born of flame, you have resistance to fire damage and searing ignition. When you take the attack action on your turn, you can replace a single attack with a magical burst of flame. Each creature of your choice within 15 feet of you that you can see must make a deck save. On a failed save, the creature takes fire damage equal to 1 die 8 plus your proficiency bonus and is blinded until the start of your next turn. 
On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and isn't blinded. You can use your Searing Ignition a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. This this feat is kind of amazing. I mean, it's a half feat, right? So you're only losing out on a plus one, but you're gaining resistance to fire, probably the second most common damage in the game. And in addition to that, you have this ability you're going to be able to use two to six times a day. Uh, it replaces one of your attacks. So if you're a martial character already, you're not really losing a whole lot. Right. Maybe that one attack is less damage, but it's burst damage. Mm -hmm. And also with a debuff attached to it, that's pretty freaking awesome. Yeah, I, uh, you know, not, not that the fire resistance would be helpful, but uh, I think Vint would like this. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so next up, we have Fury of the Frost Giant theme going on here. Uh, you have to be fourth le level, and you need Strike of the Giants. And you have to, and also you have to have specific to Frost Giants. Uh, you've manifest an icy might emblematic of Frost Giants, granting you the following benefits. Increase your strength, con, or wisdom by one. Born of Ice, resistance to cold damage. Frigid retaliation immediately after a creature you can see within 30 feet of you hits you with an attack roll and deals damage. You can use a reaction to retaliate with a conjured blast of ice. The creature must make a con save. On the failed save, take, uh, the creature takes a die 8 plus your proficiency bonus cold damage and its speed is halved until the end of your next turn. If you, you can use this reaction a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. Get them back on a long rest. It's, you know, using your reaction, so another great thing for, uh, you know, a melee attacker is like, oh, you've been hit, boom, I'm going to get some extra damage thrown out there, and, you know, I think if someone's already hitting you with a melee attack, reducing their speed probably isn't super helpful, but you never know, what, you know, how often that situation is going to come up. Yeah, well, one of the things we're saying, too, like with the giant feats now is also you can't stack giant feats. You right. can, you're going to be, you're going to be kind of connected to one giant, that's it. Correct. Uh, Guile of the Cloud Giant. Uh, again, uh, prerequisite fourth level, Strike of the Giants, specific to Cloud. You've manifested the airy speech and magic emblematic of Cloud Giants, granting you the following benefits. Uh, it's a half feat, so increase your dex, con, or charisma. So Cloudy Escape. When a creature you can see hits you with an attack roll, you can use your reaction to give yourself resistance to that attack's damage. You then teleport to an unoccupied space you can see within 30 feet of yourself. You can use this reaction a number of times equal to half your proficiency bonus, round it up, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So, so this one we see a little bit of change on how often you use it, but it is really good. Resistance to the damage you take have taken, and, you know, depending on, you, you know, you just got to a disintegrate spell, right? Ow! Uh, and then you can get out of dodge. Yeah. Yeah, you know, really helpful, really useful, and, uh, you know, again, another giant option to play with. Keenness of Stone Giant. Stone Giants are one of my favorite giants. I know. <laughs> They're special in my heart. Prereq, fourth level, and you need Strike of the Giants. You've uh, manifested physical talents, emblematic of Stone Giants, granting you the following benefits. Uh, ability score increases strength, con, or wisdom. Stone throw. As a bonus action, you can touch a rock that can fit in the palm of your hand and imbue it with magic. While the rock is imbued with this magic, you're wielding it. The rock is a magic ranged weapon with which you're proficient and has a thrown property with a range of 60 feet and a long range of 180 feet. On a hit, the rock deals die 10 bludgeoning damage, and if the target is a creature, it must succeed on a strength saving throw. Or be knocked pro, and the magic the magic remains in the rock until you hit with it or finish a long rest. You can imbue a number of rocks equal to your proficiency bonus with a bonus action, and you can regain all of the expended uses when you finish the long rest. So technically, I feel like you could just do imbue them all and hold on to them until you need them. Yeah. Uh, this would be great with Throne Weapon Master. Yes, yes, it would. <laughs> Cavernous Sight, you gain dark vision out to a range of 60 feet. If you already have this dark vision from another source of range, uh, the raising increase is by 60 feet. Would be really great with a Gloomstalker character. Yeah, I mean, I, I keep looking at all these things that say, oh, if you already have dark vision, increase it by, I want to like, you know, you put all those things, it's like, all right. How, how good can you actually make, you know, your dark vision? Well, you can get out to 180 feet if you choose, depending on what race you choose, uh -huh. and plus the 60. And I feel like there's somewhere else we there's, can get there's a, there's a couple things that, you know, give you a little boost. Uh, we have Outland's Envoy, fourth level Scion of Outer Plains feet. You have spent significant time in Sigil or elsewhere in Outlands, the crossroads of the multiverse. Being steeped in converging planar energies grants you the following benefits. It's a half feet of your choice. Uh, Crossroads Emissary. You learn the Misty Step and Tongue Spell. 
You can cast each of these spells once using this feat without a spell slot. I must finish a long rest before you can cast the spells in this way again. When you cast tongues using this feat, you require no material components. You can also cast these spells using spell slots you, you have of the appropriate level. The spell's casting ability is the one chosen when you gain this scion of the Outer Plains feat. All right. So, man, I just got to say, 5.5 is going to be more powerful feats. Feats, pro- feats are looking very unoptional at this point. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've got feat trees. We've got feat trees. It's happening. Planner, planner Wanderer, fourth level. Uh, you can draw on forces of the multiverse to survive cosmic extremes and to traverse the infinite realms. You gain these benefits. Planar adaptation. When you finish a long rest, you gain resistance to either acid, cold, or fire damage. Your choice. Get to change it every long rest. Portal Cracker. Uh, your experience with portals allows you to operate them without the proper portal key. As an action, you... You concentrate on a portal you're aware of that is within five feet of you and make a DC 20 wisdom survival check. On a failure, you you take three to eight force damage and you can't use this feature on that portal until you finish a long rest. On a success, you can force the portal open or closed for one hour. For the duration, the portal closed in this way doesn't respond to a portal key unless creatures employing the key can succeed a DC 20 intelligence or arcana check. You get to, you can, you can hold the door. <laughs> hold the door. <laughs> uh, portal sense. You can know the direction of the last plane or portal you use while you're, you, while you and the portal are on the same plane. Moreover, as an action, you can detect the location of any portals within 30 feet of you that aren't behind total cover. Once you detect the portal with the action, you can't use this action until it finish the long run. They're doing sigil. Like this is, like this has gotta be sigil, sigil. I don't know. I've seen it pronounced different <laughs> ways, but there's no way like this can't be spell jammer. This is right. unless, unless they decide to connect spell jammer to planescape somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's possible that that's how, you know, the spell jammer things are, are going. Uh, I like this. Uh, it's not going to be useful in a lot of style of games, uh, but in in our world where there are a lot of portals and planar travel, I think this could be something that you know we could use a lot in our own our own game. And anything that's that's talking about portals, I'm here for it because I love the extra planar nonsense. Right. Or if you're doing Planescape and Sigil, the City of Doors. City of Doors. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so next up is uh, Righteous Herator. Prerequisite, fourth level, Scion of the Outer Plains with a good Outer Plane feat. You can channel the cosmic forces of good that foster serenity and fellowship. You are still free to choose your own actions, but gain these following benefits. Uh, it's a half feat, so you get an ability score of your choice by one. And you can soothe pain. When you are a creature you can see within 30 feet of you takes damage, you can use your reaction to dull its suffering and reduce the damage it takes by one die 10 plus your proficiency bonus. You can use this benefit a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you get it all back on a long rest. So I'm saying, like, if you know, you've got this feat, you are a Goliath, and then you take, and then also you have someone with the intercept. Actually, I think you can use it on yourself as well. Right. The intercept uh, fighting style, you could be reducing damage left and right. Well, this one requires your reaction. They all oh, require oh, your reaction. Okay, so you're, you're saying like if you once do per it, turn, you, yeah. you can do it. You you can be handing these out like candy once per turn, uh, <laughs> for sure. Every time you get hit, I'm going to reduce that. I'm going to reduce that. Mm. But once per turn. <laughs> but once per turn. <laughs> yeah. Next up, we've got Rune Carver Apprentice. You've gone to study the art of runecraft. You learn the Copperhead language of the spell. You can cast the spell without expending a spell slot. And you must finish a long rest before you cast it in this way again. You can also cast the spell using any spell slots you have. You know, two runes of your choice uh, from the rune spells table. Now, again, right, the wording is very specific. You learn. So clearly, to me, that says, like, you have it. You can learn. You can cast it. But you also get a free casting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then we have, uh, you know, two runes of your choice from the rune spells table. Whenever you finish a long rest, you can mark one non-magical weapon, armor, or piece of clothing, or other object you touch with a rune. You know, you temporarily learn one first level spell based on the rune. You inscribed as a specific, uh, specified in the rune spells table. You know the spell until you finish a long rest when the rune fades. This list is about half as long as it was before, because this one appeared in the giant options. Right. Um, and, you know, like I said, like literally half. And there was some really cool things in there. I don't know if it's, I don't know if they've reduced it for space 
or if they reduce it because they're like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe all of these don't really need to be mm-hmm. in there or it's too good. I, it, you know, it's I don't enti- know. It's entirely possible that they like the other ones and are like, all right, let's test these ones and see what their thoughts are here. Yeah. And we'll just go with it. But you've got death is the ray of sickness. Dragon is chromatic orb. Enemy is disguised self. Friend is speak with animals. Journey is long strider. King is command. Mountain is entangle. And the sacred rune is sanctuary. Uh, while you're wearing or carrying a rune marked object, you can cast a spell associated with the chosen rune once without using a spell slot or material components. And you also can cast a spell using a spell slot. So you can, uh, your spell casting ability is based off of intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. It's whatever you choose when you take the feat. Uh, each time you gain a level, you can replace one of the runes with a different one. So you're getting co- Copperhead Languages. And you're going to have access to two different spells that you can kind of switch in and out. You're getting a free casting of all of those, and it just increases the number of spells that you know. Yeah. So uh, all in all, I think that's a uh, you know it, it's a good get. You know, it's a a, a pretty interesting uh, you know thing to be able to play with. Um, you know, depending upon what kind of spellcaster you're playing with, I think that could be a lot of fun. Or for a non-spellcaster, you could you could have some fun with it as well. Next up is Rune Carver Adept, prerequisite fourth level, and you need to have the Rune Carver Apprentice feat. Your ability to draw out power from runes has grown. Increase the ability score of the spellcasting ability chosen when you granted when you gained the Rune Carver Apprentice feat to a maximum of, by one to a maximum of twenty. Whenever you cast a spell from the rune spells table or a spell of a school of magic associated with the spell you marked on an object from a rune carver apprentice feat, you can invoke the runic power, granting you one of the, the benefits of your choice. Battle runes. Choose one creature you can see within 30 feet of yourself. Until the end of that creature's next turn, it's a, it has advantage on the next attack roll it makes. Healing runes. Choose one creature you can see within 30 feet of yourself. That creature gains temporary hit points equal to your level. And Runic Winds. Choose one creature you can see within 30 feet of yourself until the end of that creature's turn. Its movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks, and its walking speed increases by 10 feet. And you can invoke Runic Power a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, but no more than once per spell you cast. Uh, you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So this is a sweet half feat that also gives a boost whenever you cast... Uh, one of two, you know, one of two, a spell from one of two schools of magic that that is getting expanded upon, or those specific spells, uh, and you know, two to six times a day, it's pretty sweet to give your spells a little bit extra kick. Indeed. So next up, we have uh, Scion of the Elemental Air. You've been exposed to the primordial magic of the elemental uh, plane of air, granting you the following benefits: elemental magic. You learn the minor illusion cantrip. Uh, winds glide. You can use your bonus action to gain a flying speed equal to your walking speed till the end of your turn. If you are airborne at the end of your turn after this movement and aren't aloft by other means, you fall. You now can use your bonus action a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. Get them back after a long rest. Uh, you you sort of have gliding until you don't. <laughs> uh, so again, you know, you stack this with the uh, the, the glitchling. Now you can, you know, mm-hmm. essentially do that twice. You know, twice your proficiency modifier. Yeah. You know, depending upon how you want to play with it. Well, this requires a bonus action to activate it. Uh, so there there is that. Right. Well, however, however we want to play. It. All right. So all in all, I think that's uh, you know that that's pretty decent. And you know, we we know there's a whole whole discussion on the the flying characters, and we're not going to get into that. So next up is the Scion of Elemental Earth. You've been exposed to the primordial magic of the elemental planes of Earth, granting you the following benefits. Elemental Magic. You learn the Druidcraft cantrip using intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. Earth and Shield. You can use a bonus action to conjure a bulwark of Earth that provides half cover to you or a creature of your choice within 30 feet of you. The bulwark remains until the start of your next turn. You can create this bulwark a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you get them all back on a long rest. Yeah, so this one's fun. You know, basically, you got archers in your crew, or you need to hide behind something, or if you're afraid the enemy's about to cast a big spell and you would like a bonus to your your, your deck save, you know, and, you know, cover stacks with pretty much everything but cover. Sure. Uh, and, you know, to me, that, that definitely reminds me of, uh, you know... Uh, air bending? Air, 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 air or earth bending, you know, where, yeah. you know, she hits the ground and the thing comes up, you know, right in front of somebody. So I dig it. Knew where you're going. I just... 
for some reason, my brain said the wrong element. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Uh, you know, what comes after Earth but fire? Sign of the elemental fire. You've been exposed to primordial magic of the elemental plane of fire, granting you the following benefits. Elemental magic. You learn dancing lights as a uh, cantrip. Also, you get a fervent blaze. You learn the produce flame cantrip using the same spellcasting ability you chose for this feat. Elemental magic benefits. Fervent blaze. You learn the produce cantrip. Uh, you can cast produce flame as a normal, as normal, and you can also cast this as a bonus action, number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. Get it back after a long rest. So that's Ooh. super cool. Being able to cast a spell, even if it's just cantrip as a bonus action. Again, the rules are you can cast a cantrip and a regular spell. So you want to, if you wanted to cast fireball and 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 then also cast uh, produce flame, you could, or you could just double up and produce flame. I, I like that. I just you know two flames, you know, just poof, I. I, I, Thematically, it's really cool. Yeah, I, I, I totally, do, I totally love that, uh, and I would just totally flavor that. Like you do it both at the same time, just boom. I, I really like the visual on that. That just might have to happen. Speaks to your inner pyromancer, <laughs> to, to my or, inner pi- or inner pyromaniac, <laughs> indeed. Uh, so, scion of elemental water. You've been exposed to the primordial magic of the elemental plane of water, granting you the following benefits: elemental magic. You learn thaumaturgy. Uh, wave surge, you can use a bonus action to create a forceful surge of water directed at a creature within 15 feet that you can see. The target has to make a strength saving throw. On a failure, the target is pushed up to 10 feet away from you or pulled up to 10 feet towards you, your choice. The water vanishes immediately after the creature succeeds or fails. You can create this effect a number of times a day, equal to your proficiency bonus, and you get it all back on a long rest. Yeah, I mean these are a lot of fun, and you could you could technically take them all. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not limited in that way. I mean, four feet is huge, and you're really going to be lagging behind in your your stats. stats but you know, it would be cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like if you if you mix this up with the, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, way of the four elements, monk. There you go. You've definitely got some more elemental options to play with, especially because yeah. you know you're not limited here by key points. So. So we also have Scion of the Outer Plains. You are influenced by and an adept at navigating planar pathways and the strange realities of the Outer Plains. Whether planar essence infuses you or you have extra planar ancestry, your connection to a plane infuses you with energies found there. Choose a type of plane listed in the planar infusion table below. Your choice gives you resistance to the damage type and the ability to cast a cantrip a specific specific in the table you can cast this cantrip without material components and the spell casting ability for uh for it is whatever you choose intelligence wisdom charisma uh and we get our choice of astral plane which is psychic and message chaotic outer planes necrotic and minor illusion evil outer planes necrotic and chill touch and good outer planes radiant and sacred sacred flame uh, you've also got the la- Lawful Outer Plane, which is Radiant, and with the spell Guidance, and the Outlands is Psychic and Mage Hand. So it's not bad. It's not like super... I, well, I guess you're getting resistance, right? You're getting resistance, and you're getting a cantrip. Yeah. And you're probably getting this feat for free more than likely. You're getting this feat for free because you're probably adding it as a, as a, you know, as a way of getting there. So it's definitely, a, definitely added to... Uh, and, and it's, it's a prereq a, rec for a bunch of feats. It's, it's a building block because you're mm-hmm. going to need them. Uh, next up is Soul of the Storm Giant. Prerequisite fourth level, Strike of the Giants with Storm. You've manifested divination abilities in Tempest Magic, emblematic of Storm Giants, granting you the following benefits. You get a, a half feat to Wisdom, Intelligence, or Charisma, and the Maelstrom Aura. As a bonus action, you sound yourself in an aura of magical wind and lightning that extends t- 10 feet from you in every direction, but not through total cover. The aura lasts until the start of your next turn or until you are incapacitated. While the aura is active, attack rolls against you have disadvantage, and whenever a creature starts its turn within the aura, you can force the creature to make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, the creature's speed is halved until the start of its next turn. You can use this bonus action a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you gain all expended fin- uses when you finish a long rest. They're like, whatever we do, we cannot combine this with any damage. Because uh, if we do, it is going to affect the Tempest Cleric, <laughs> and like, this will be a must feat for the Tempest Cleric. Yep, yep. Imagine that, and then you'd be then you'd be knocking things back as well, as, you know, even further. Indeed. Uh, Strike of the Giants. This is a prerequisite for a bunch of these feats. You absorb primeval magic that 
Primeval magic that gives you an echo of might of giants. Choose one of the kinds of giants listed below as a bonus action. You can call the power of your giant magic to imbue your attacks with additional power. The next time you hit a target with a melee or thrown weapon attack within the next uh, minute, the attack has additional effects depending on the origin of your giant magic. Hell Giant, the target takes an extra d6 damage. A weapon site, the target... Uh, if the target is a creature, it must succeed on a strength saving throw or be knocked prone. Stone Giant is an extra d6 of force damage. Uh, it's a strength saving throw or be pushed 10 feet back in a straight line. Frost Giant is an extra d6 of cold damage. It's a con save or your sp speed is reduced to zero. Fire Giant, uh, the target takes an extra die fire damage, no extra effect. Cloud Giant tar target takes an extra die for thunder damage. If the target is a creature, it must succeed on a wisdom save, or it becomes inv uh, or you become invisible to it till the start of your next turn. Storm Giant, the target takes an extra d6 lightning damage. If the target is a creature, it must succeed on a constitution saving throw, or has disadvantage on attack rolls until the start of your next turn. This is a good one to combine with the Tempest, Tempest Cleric. <laughs> um... And then, uh, so I, um, you're going to use your con or your strength when you determine a DC. I thought I'd mention that because it's very rare that we use con to, right. re to determine the DC. And then, you, you know, you get to use the number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, get them back in a long rest. So two to six times a day, you can buff your attacks. All right, so our last and final feat here is going to be Vigor of the Hill Giant. Uh, prerequisite fourth level, and you need to strike of the giant's hill giant feet. You've manifested the resilience emblematic of hill giants, granting you the following benefits. It's a half feet, but you only get constitution as your choice. You get bulwark when you're subjected to an effect that would move you at least five feet or knock you prone. You can use your reaction to steady yourself. You are then neither moved nor knocked prone, and you're going to get iron stomach. Whenever you eat food as part of a short rest and spend one or more hit dice to regain hit points, you regain additional hit points equal to your constitution modifier plus your proficiency bonus. All right, this one's cool, but it's also very important. This is like the this was the most important thing that I've seen in this whole and doc, whole document. Right? Okay, I've heard a lot of discussion: Is five E going to do away with the short rest? I feel like everything they're doing, they're changing things, they're moving towards that five point five uh, mindset. But here we, here we have a short rest directly called out that they're still using them. Now, mm -hmm. it doesn't change what short rest means in 5e. I don't know, right. but they're still there. They're still there. So there we have, you know, 21, you know, widespread abilities, some awesome feats, some definitely things to, to play with. I like seeing the rune stuff come back because I'm a big fan of rune stuff. Uh, so we'll get to see where this is going. I don't. I don't know Giants runes, if that really applies to Sigil or whether they're just putting some stuff together be like, hey, here's what we're working on and this is going to come into multiple things or if maybe Giants. Yeah, it, do, it just seems like they're doing two different pro products here. <laughs> sure. And, and I'm, I'm here for it. I like, I like what I see. And, you know, let's see what's next. But if you're looking for something else to, uh, you know, kind of be ready to throw into your into your game, why not check out of the box Encounters for 5th Edition? Uh, encounters for 5th edition can drop right into your own game. Out of the box picks up where the adventure takes off and puts 55 dynamic scenarios into your hands, ready at a moment to engage and challenge players and their characters. In worlds of adventure across the multiverse, magic, mysteries, and monsters await bold explorers. When heroes step into the unknown, you'll have everything you need to reward curiosity with clever puzzles, compelling antagonists, design insights, and guidance for introducing each encounter Plus, what to do when players think out of the box and intriguing encounter elements become the whole campaign. Encounters are written and designed for more than providing easy-to-use scenarios to energize your game session. Many encounters give tools and examples for solving common issues like players who miss a game session, encouraging collaborative role-playing and storytelling, and promoting group teamwork and problem-solving. Adventure awaits around every turn. Be ready for anything to emerge from out of the box. Let us know what you thought of this Wonders of the Multiverse down in the comments below. Do you like these feats? Do you hate these feats? Maybe you don't even use feats in your game at all. Uh, discuss with the Nerdarchy community down below. While you're down, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Quick reminder, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we drop new videos here on the channel. So come on back. 
but you can't wait till then. No worries. We got you covered up here with our part three, where we talk about new D and D backgrounds for, from wonders of the multiverse. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.